All right, well, uh, let's rock and roll. Let's start with just um, saying that obviously today is a, a really, really good day for us for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, when we signed, when we had the late signing period, I wanted to wait until I got all the names in and just kind of did this all at once rather than trickling it uh, to you guys a, a little bit at a time. I thought it would be better to put it all on the plate and then you know, give you, give you more work basically was my goal. So let me just start out with this. <clears throat> um, first of all, I'm really proud of my staff. Uh, I think that we have uh, collectively have done a phenomenal job uh, in this last late signing period at, at putting together a group of young men that are really, really going to be good for us um, for, a, for a plethora of reasons, just because of the, the way the classes are going to be balanced. Um, the character of the young men we're bringing in, the, the athleticism, the versatility, um, you know, the, the, the ability to win soon, uh, sooner than later, but then also with some uh, uh, being able to, I think, sustain it the way we balance the classes. So, you know, we had to take a lot of things into account. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts based on uh, the State of the Union a, a year ago. And, so today has is, uh, is, is really you know, been a significant step forward in, in uh, Rebel basketball moving forward. So let me just, let me just tell you that the staff that I, we assembled a year ago, um, we, you know, when, when Tina hired me, we had lengthy conversations about what it would take to win here. And as you know, her and I have worked together this year, it's been clear uh, that she has a complete understanding of what I needed to do to moving forward to be successful here. So, you know, I wanted to, to thank her for her guidance uh, for this past season and also the direction to, to do some of the things that we were able to do today. So, um, that kind of is, is the, the gist of, uh, you know, what we wanted to come together today and talk about. And then I would uh, like to maybe just kind of give you some bullet points on each guy and then I'll open it up for questions uh, for you guys at that point, okay? So, kind of a kind of a curveball that you might not know about because this just literally just got done. It's uh, the first of of the of the guys that we'll talk about in this uh, late signing period. One is uh, the first one is is Shakur Justin, who is a the national junior college player of the year. Um, was on a national championship winning team. Was the MVP of that tournament. Will be playing here this Saturday. Uh, it's a golden opportunity for our fans to get an early look at what I feel will be one of the, the anchors of our program uh, next year. You know, Shakur is a, um, a great human being with a great family, had uh, great coaching, um, very humble. If you look his tweet on even on how he announced it, you know, a lot of, not a lot of fanfare, just kind of uh, thanking and being grateful to, to his former coaches and so on and so forth. Uh, but he will be playing Saturday at the Orleans at 4.30 p.m. Uh, at the Orleans Arena, and in that game is the National Junior College All-Star Game. So I would encourage all uh, of Rebel Nation to come, come out to the game and, uh, and, and show Shakur how we do it here in Las Vegas. So uh, that kind of is the bullet points on him. And again, as time goes on, we'll, we'll do much more in-depth stuff on all these guys. But um, another really, really talented player who will be a freshman is Travell Beck, and you guys have a lot of your intel on Travell, uh, Travell already. We call him Nunu. That's his nickname, Nunu. So, um, but, you know, this is a kid who, in my estimation of all of the freshmen, he's one of those guys that is another guy who brings a lot of versatility, can score a lot of different ways. He's got some really good toughness to him. Is, uh, it was, a, was a very, very good high school player who was on the verge of, of going to the high major, took an additional year of, of uh, school at, at a postgrad, a prep school, um, On Point Academy, and, and is now um, qualified and full qualified and ready to go at the Division I level. So uh, looking at what he does from a size perspective and what he brings to us is, is, uh, was another component that we knew we needed to, to shore up. Uh, we have another young man um, who is from well, he's originally from Dakar, I believe, in Senegal, um, and he is, his name is, it's, it's, it almost looks like Shek, like our Shek, but it's not pronounced Shek. It's, uh, you don't really pronounce the, the K, so it's more like uh, Sheg, 
than it is Sheck, but we'll figure out the, we'll get all the phonetics together as we go forward. So, and it's uh, Mbake is what we call him. Okay, so Mbake is his middle name and Jong is uh, last name. So we'll call him Mbake for now. That would be the easiest way for most people to pronounce it. Uh, Mbake is long, athletic, big time defender, another great human being, very humble kid. Uh, I first saw him in Africa when I was doing a, uh, some work there about maybe three years ago now. Um, and he played most recently at uh, Florida Prep and all of the details are in your, your press packet there about uh, what he's done here, he's re who he's recruited by and things of that nature. But uh, another guy who's gonna be able to come in and be, give us a great four years um, and, and, and you know, not just move this needle for us, but move it uh, hopefully sooner than later in the right direction. Okay, we've got, uh, is there only two more? I only had two on my card. There's three more. Okay, we talked about Anthony Smith. Actually, we haven't talked about Anthony at all yet, right? Okay, Anthony is a junior college player who, in my estimation, is one of the best junior college players in the country, but the way it works for junior college is that California is separated from the national rankings. So um, he wasn't put in that category, but in California, in my estimation, he was the best at his position by far. Super athlete. Um, Kind of a unique situation. Anthony didn't play high school ball, uh, kind of was playing but didn't really take it serious until a little bit later in life. Um, and now he's put himself in a position to have a Division I scholarship here. Uh, I'm very familiar with his, uh, his family and, and, and his uh, coaches, AU coaches, and, and guys that worked with him when he was uh, you know, being developed as a younger man. Uh, again, life is about relationships, you know? I don't think we... Uh, get a lot of these guys without having the staff that we have um, and the relationships that we've had and that we put together. So pumped up about uh, bringing Anthony in as well. Uh, he's a junior college guy who will have two years to play for us. Again, we're looking at the balancing of the classes. Um, another freshman to go backwards uh, in classes here for a moment, uh, a young man who just left less than what, 14 hours ago, uh, Amari Hardy uh, was just added uh, onto the roster as well. He signed his papers and uh, he and his dad, Ramsey, were here. It was an automatic fit, great chemistry with the guys. There was no question that, that uh, there was just a great comfort level. And, and you talk about that when you encourage your high school and your junior college players and to go on and look for a fit, look for a comfort level, look for the interaction with the other players and the staff. And it was just all very natural. Um, he's a heady little uh, left-handed point guard. He had decommitted from uh, another institution uh, earlier uh, in the month and uh, put himself, uh, you know, there was a coaching change, so he's back on the market, so to speak, but no longer on the market, thank God, because uh, we were able to, to scoop him up. Um, again, just having friends that, that speak up on our behalf and, and how we do things and how I run my program. Um, it was very, it was very, uh, automatic with him. It was just almost uh, spontaneous the way that the chemistry clicked, you know, from the first hug to, to the, the meals and then showing him what we have to offer here, everything from the facilities to, to the things that occur in the summer and so on and so forth. And especially our development was big for him. Um, and then lastly, the, uh, just a short little point guard out of San Diego uh, <laughs> that caused a lot of chatter this year nationally, the real McCoy. We landed, um, Sure, that won't be the first time we hear that, but uh, we landed Brandon McCoy, who is uh, one of the, if not the best player left on the board, so to speak, in, in the high school uh, category. So he's a senior out of San Diego, California, who will be joining us, a McDonald's All-American, very well decorated, uh, played in, like I said, so many, um, has received so many accolades, it's all in your packet there. Uh, so I won't go uh, too much into that, but other than to say that, again, it's about relationships. Um, and we had a lot of relationships in that, in that uh, circle of influence and in that family that kept us in the mix, kept, kept us in the mix. And over the course of time of recruiting uh, Brandon McCoy for the course of the year, just became more and more evident that uh, he was gonna receive the things that he needed. Brandon could have gone anywhere in the United States and, and he also could have went anywhere and become a pro. Um, but our goal is to help him to, to be an NBA All-Star. And we have a very specific script that we put into place to achieve that. And the greatest thing about Brandon is that he just wants to go to work. 
he doesn't care if he leaves after this year, next year. He's not one foot in, one foot out the door. He is here to help the Rebels win. That became clear and evident to me throughout our uh, journey together. I've constantly said, you know, I'm, I'm not really trying to get one and done guys unless it works. And he may be one of those guys that works. And I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that that, that uh, is going to be. So uh, get out and buy your season tickets right now. Uh, we want to make sure that <laughs> we, we have, I think we've got like a thousand left. Is that where we're at right now? So anyway, things are good. Things are well. And uh, I did want to just remind you briefly about the game. Um, I, th I think it'd be awesome to really show a, a nice showing out to the Orleans at, at 4.30 on Saturday for, for Shakur and, uh, and, and, and give them that, that thrust of support from day one. So that'll be a second time here. Um, and then lastly, I said lastly, but one other thing is I didn't, I want to be remiss and not mention Jay Green out of our first recruiting class, who is a 6'5 combo guard. Uh, that you guys have already done a lot of stuff on already, but um, that would complete our class. And a lot of intel, a lot of information. Um, so I'll open it up for questions now, and we'll kind of kind of go from there. It did. Uh, the question for those of you who didn't hear it: Did getting Brandon help secure the other, the last two, which would be Amari and Shakur? It, it un, undoubtedly played a role. I mean, that's how influential his ability and personality is. He's like a Pied Piper, you know, among, among the, the young guys. So, so it was good to, good to get that done. And my only regret is they didn't do it earlier. <laughs> Where do you envision playing Brandon? He's pretty versatile. Anywhere he wants to play. I don't know if he can play point guard if he wants to, and I'll move JoJo to the center position. No, I, you know, he's a guy that, um, uh, tell, him, tell him I'll call him back. So he's a guy that is just, you know, he's so talented. Uh, he is versatile, but he knows who he is. He's a center, uh, and he's a very good one. But he's also uh, capable of doing other things that make him a really, really uh, uh, positive attribute to, to the program. So, you know, I'm not going to get caught up on X's and O's in terms of details on different guys right now because we haven't had practice for one day, and there's a lot of different guys that I think have versatility. The, the main thing to know is that we recruit it to how we want to play. You know, Brandon can run the floor, you know, at, at, at seven feet. Um, we recruited to being running rebels. You know, we recruited to a defensive style of play um, by selecting these particular student athletes that would help us uh, be able to do that and create some excitement on both sides of the floor. What does a guy like this do for the program in the big picture? I'm getting I guess we'll find out. You know, I'm hopeful that it'll be something that, you know, creates a spark and, a, and an energy that, that does sell some more tickets and get some folks out to, to say, hey, listen, let's, let's, let's continue to support our Rebels. But gosh, Coach has kind of moved the needle a little bit, so let's, let's make sure we get out. I meant to get out this year, and I didn't get out as much as I wanted. You know, I don't think winning and losing should drive a program's support uh, in a perfect world. But let's face it, the world's not perfect. But this is one town where talent and winning will put some butts in the seats, and we're going to do that. What about with kids, though, out in the country? Just, you know, they'll see, wow, there's five-star guys coming here. Do they kind of notice that, and they say, well, if Marvin can do that, you know, hey, something's going on there? Yeah, there's no question. I mean, I think, like, uh, you know, Mark asked me, did, did it help with the other two guys? I think it moved it like that. You, you signed Brandon McCoy and Omari and Shakur in like, like that, and they were already, you know, they were down the road a little bit, but that just made it, yeah, I want to play with that guy, you know, and they know him, and they play with him, and they – you know, met each other. They've known each other from throughout the years in different places, different events. So he's that kind of personality. He's that kind of kid that you want to be around. And you guys will get a – he'll be one of your favorites. He'll be one of your all-time Rebel favorites. Trust me. He's, he's – I mean, he plays musical instruments. He speaks language. I mean, he's just – he's a phenomenal human being, and he's a, and he's a worker. You know, he loves to work, which at seven foot sometimes isn't always the case. When, uh, when Brandon told you that he was committed um – like, where were you? How did he tell you? Where were you? What was your reaction? What was the staff's reaction? Well, you know, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly because it was kind of a committing process. <laughs> it wasn't your typical coach. I made my decision, you know. Um, but when we talked on the phone, it was one of those deals where uh, I was very hopeful and I felt good about it. But it wasn't until you hear it that this, this is, we're getting this done, that you kind of, 
<sighs> okay, now, because that, that's a big, you know, feather in our cap, you know, so, uh, but it was just more of a, it was weird, it was almost more of a, a relief that we got our guy, you know? Marvin, you're, you're one over now with scholarship stuff, what, any ideas we're going to do? With, uh, would you say we're? One over, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of options. Uh, we've got, you know, we've got to look at everything now and kind of go back with the guys that, um, that were being retained and so forth. Uh, and and you know, there's some options of red shirting and you know, maybe a guy paying his way for a year. There's just different things that we're gonna look at and try to find the best situation for each one of those guys. You know? So whether that's here and, or, or somewhere else, you know, I just, I'm all about having the kid's journey be what it's supposed to look like in college. Um, but I also have uh, <laughs> UNLV Renner Rebels as, a, as you know, my top priority. So you got to make sure that you're balancing things, but staying true to your integrity of why you do what you do. Which is one of the things I learned last year, you know, going through a tough season. I forget who it was that asked me. It might have been you, Mike. Did I learn anything? I don't know it was one of you two. And, it, and you asked me what, the lessons. Have we talked about the lessons this past year? One of the ones that I learned I didn't mention earlier when I was asked that question was when you're going through a tough period is to rely on the foundation of your principles of why you do what you do and your family and, and the commitment to the kids and um, all of those reasons that you got into coaching. You really go back to those and, and get rooted in those because so, so often we get just caught up in just the winning. And um, I think when I, when I got caught back up in more so into the, in why I do what I do, I, you know, you get a better level of peace and you get a better level of understanding how to navigate those types of tricky situations from a numerical, you know, well, we got one over. Well, I got to work it out. We'll be okay. And the kids will be okay, too. Marvin, for those that don't follow recruiting and don't maybe necessarily know, know these names, I hate to use another sports analogy, but is this a home run for you guys or how would you characterize that? Uh, I would say it's a grand slam. You know, this is... <laughs> I'm tempering my expectations, uh, not my expectation, but my excitement, because we still got to go win some games, right? But man, this is huge. I mean, this is, it's national. I mean, I got, I can't tell you how many texts I got last night. Not because it's a violation, I just can't tell you I got that many texts. It was an amazing deal. Like, my phone is blowing up like I just made the NCAA tournament. When I was at New Mexico State, I couldn't, I, when I got the job here, I couldn't stop. You know, when, in, in, when I was in New Mexico State and, and, and we would go to the tournament, you know, my phone would blow up like crazy. When I got the job here, my phone would blow up. Okay. It was on that level. It, it was, it's, that, it's that big. Coach, can you talk about the potential you see in this recruiting club? Ooh, potential is a scary word, isn't it? The potential. They're obviously very talented. Uh, it's tough to get caught up in hype and rankings and so on and so forth because those are real coaches don't recruit to stars you know what i mean that's not my thing i recruit to my system my program my style of play my philosophy uh people i want to bring into my family so when you ask about what their potential is i i, you know, I want to give you a true answer and obviously on paper the potential is you know sky's the limit uh, and, and and the other guys that'll follow because of the guys that we've signed but until we put in the work uh, I got to see the, you know, how they how they respond, you know. So it's kind of tough to answer. And Marvin, just very quickly, you touched on it already, talking about the fan base, and you don't want it to be on wins and losses in terms of the support. Mm -hmm. but this kind of class, a guy with the name of McCoy, that right. a lot of people know. I mean, how much did this re-inject that excitement for running red with basketball? If you're trying to get you know. I I would hope a lot. <laughs> you know, I would, I would hope that it's something that, and not just because, like you say, of the stars, but, but because of who this particular kid is, which Las Vegas doesn't really know yet. I do, but I think once they get to meet Brandon and once they get to see him work out, once they get to see him play, I think it's gonna, I think people are gonna be really excited about it. And so I think the more that the fan base gets engaged with the particular players that we've selected to be a part of our family, I think the, the synergy is going to grow within the city of wanting to continue that support in the right direction. With the brand UNLV, you mentioned when you got hired, is this the kind of class you kind of expect though? You mentioned a home run, but are these the kind of guys, this is what we should be doing here with UNLV? I, I mean, absolutely. I, I look at, if we didn't sign these three guys in the last few days, we were going to be significantly better than we were last year. Uh, just with adding Jordy 
you know, as a, as a true point and, and having Dwayne healthy uh, and, and ready to roll. And the guys that we had already signed that we didn't talk about and, and, the, the, and Jay, Jay Green from the earlier class. I mean, we were going to be better based off of that already. So now you add these three, it just, man, it blows the roof off. So now it's just a matter of, of, of going to work. But this is kind of what you expect. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, I, I expect to win a national championship one day. So, so they, yeah, you're not going to do it without this caliber of talent. So, yeah, I mean, that's what we're working towards. But, it's, but that's not just, you know me, that's not the only thing. It's, we got to do other things. We got to pass classes. We got to be great kids in the community. We got great ambassadors for the university. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that, that go into making up a successful program and and so yes you know the winning is a big part of it and yes i want to make this program every bit as 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 successful on the floor as as they were you know back in the day so to speak uh winning a championship and so forth but i also want the pride of the city to be based on more than just what occurs on the on the basketball court you guys have been mentioned as a possible leader for Brandon for a, a, a while now. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you see Oregon, Arizona, Michigan State mentioned. Was it a little nerve-wracking? Uh, yeah, not, not for me. Yeah. <laughs> They're the experts. You know, I guess they were wrong this time. I don't know. What do you want me to tell you? They, <laughs> I was good. <laughs> well, no, I was confident that whatever happened, I'm blessed. I'm good. I'm just glad I was able to add him to my family because he's uh, – and his, I mean, his mom, his support. I mean, it's just – they're just great people. So, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those deals where you go, when you look at all those things that the fans look at, like there's one site, I don't know, Mike, you might know what it is, where he puts her percentages on the, like his final five teams or whatever. And, I, and so somebody snapped, or sent me, not snapped, but sent me a, what do they call that? Screenshot. Screenshot. So anyway, <laughs> I'm not too tech savvy, obviously. <laughs> so it's always sent me a screenshot of where we were like a, six percent chance of getting him you know and uh, and uh i was like wow i wonder why <laughs> i'm laughing to myself because i'm knowing inside i know inside how great our relationship is so yeah if we didn't get him maybe we were six who knows but we got him so obviously somebody was wrong anything else guys you were the lead on that I was one of the guys involved, but we had a, our whole staff. We team, we did truly team recruit all these guys. Um, you know, I, I I think at the end of the day, the head coach has to be the guy that can close a, a a recruit out. But I think there was a lot of work done by a lot of staff members and support staff too. When you talk about putting together, you know, packages to present, you're talking about the tours on campus. You're talking. I mean, it's a whole, it's a family deal, man. You just can't go and, you know try to give credit to a guy when I think that happens too often in staff. So let me digress for a second. There's a common theme theme amongst division one programs where people want to call this guy, the recruiter, or he's the ace recruiter, or this guy is the, uh, you know, X and O guy, or this guy. I, I didn't, I didn't put my staff together that way. I put together complete coaches. I've got three assistant coaches that, are all head coaches in waiting in my mind. I mean, they can do it all, all three of them. So when we have a kid on, that we're involved with and he's in our top tier list, we're all working, you know, and with the different angles of presenting our program the best way we can. We can. And that's from the official visit to an unofficial visit to the correspondence to, um, you know, whatever it might be in trying to, trying to uh, see if you could secure that kid for your program. So, yeah, I, I, would, I wouldn't take away anything from anybody. This is a great staff, man. I started off the... Uh, the, um, you know, the, the talk right now about that, and I'll, I'll end it with that. All right? Are you, uh, I thought they said in. Sorry. Go ahead, Mike. Are, are, you, are, <laughs> so are, are you, do you anticipate that you're done recruiting for 2017, or are there still people that you're uh, going after? Um, are we done? Oh, no, we're done. Yeah, no, we're done. You want me to get rid of some more dudes? What are you trying to do, man? <laughs> no, bro. Yeah, we're done. You need more? We didn't, I don't think there's any more five stars out there. Who knows? All right, my phone's ringing. Let me answer that before Mike... For Mike asked me another. Thanks, you guys.